Hola, estudiantes. Bienvenidos a todos. Welcome to my channel. Are you ready to ace your Spanish exams? Because that is why we are here. I'm here to get you prepped and geared up to do exceptionally well in your CSEC Spanish exams. I am a Spanish teacher at a traditional high school in Jamaica. And without further ado, we're going to get started. But before we do, please remember to like, and subscribe and click that share button so that everyone else can benefit from this video. We are going to explore today oral questions, specifically from the category home and family. Let's get going. So the first question we have here is, ¿Cuántas personas hay en tu familia? ¿Quiénes son? This is probably the most basic question that can be asked and we have to be prepared to answer it. How many persons are there in your family? Who are they? En mi familia hay cuatro personas. Consiste en mis padres, mi hermano mayor y yo. All right, so that's my answer there. We have the construct consiste in, which means consists of. And that would have answered the question, how many persons are in your family? And we would have named them. We can even go on to saying the names of the persons. Consiste en mis padres, se llaman Felipe y María. Mi hermano mayor se llama Juan y yo. Número dos. ¿Quién es tu persona favorita en tu familia y por qué? This brings me to um, a very important tip. When we are given why questions or when we're giving reasons, it's very important that we give at least three reasons because the examiners are marking you for wide and varied vocabulary so if you give one reason it's not going to showcase your your vocabulary as much as three reasons would so let's get going with number two who is your favorite person in your family and why mi persona favorita en mi familia es mi madre Porque ella es muy comprensiva, paciente, y ella me da mucho apoyo y amor. My favorite person in my family is my mother because she is very understanding, patient, and she gives me a lot of support and love. Ella me da Mucho dinero. This is an object pronoun structure where we put the verb after the pronoun. So she gives me a lot of love and, and support. Another response. Okay, we can take it into number three. ¿Qué te gusta más de tu mamá? Which is a very good follow-up question to number two. If you would have stated that your mother is your favorite person. So what do you like the most about your mother? Bueno, vamos entonces. Me gusta más que mi mamá es muy trabajadora. También ella me entiende y ella me ayuda con mis problemas. We could have elaborated right here to use some more adjectives. 
adjectives. Me gusta más que mi mamá es muy trabajadora y cariñosa. All right. También, ella me entiende. She understands me. And she helps me with my problems. I'm just going to pause here to put in some accents. I'm going to use this draw tool up here just to draw them in. So it might not be perfect. So, mas, mama. Let's go up here. We have Maria. All right, good to go. All right, let's go on to number four, which is actually very similar to the response we gave in number three. It says, with whom do you speak about your problems and why? We could take some of the responses from number three to respond to number four, but we're going to take a different approach. We're going to say I, that we speak with our sister about our problems. Let's go. Pues, hablo de mis problemas con mi hermana mayor porque ella es simpática, me escucha, she listens to me. Escucha, sí, como así. Y ella me da muchos consejos. And she gives me a lot of advice. Sí, eso es. Let's go ahead and put in our accent, simpática. Bueno, número cinco. ¿Qué actividades haces con tu familia? What activities do you do with your family? Mi, well, we can begin with normalmente. Normalmente, mi familia y yo miramos películas en casa. Vamos a la playa y cenamos juntos los fines de semana. So normally my family and I watch movies at home. We go to the beach and we have dinner together on the weekends. Let me put in my accent for películas. Let's go on to number six. ¿Qué hace tu familia en casa por la noche? So what does your family do at home in the night? All right. So generalmente, it's always good to begin with some of these transitional words, especially when we're going to be talking about something that normally happens. Generalmente, mi familia... Um, cena limpia la casa y luego juega Y luego juega juegos de mesa por la noche. So generally, my family has dinner, cleans the house, and then play board games in the night. Number seven. ¿Cuándo visitas a tus abuelos? And we have here the personal A. It has no real translation, but it usually precedes persons. So either the name of the person or abuelo, hermano, mamá, mi amiga, la señora, it will come before a person. So we're going to put it back when we respond. When do you visit your grandparents? Okay, normalmente. Yo visito a mis abuelos cada dos semanas. So I visit my grandparents every two weeks. Finalmente, número ocho. ¿Cómo celebraste tu cumpleaños el año pasado? 
¿Cómo celebraste tu cumpleaños el año pasado? And you always have to be prepared for a description question. A question where you will have to respond in detail. Whether it is to describe a past celebration or how you and your family normally celebrate an event. And in this case, we have, how did you celebrate your birthday last year? Which means that we need to use the portrait tense to describe what we did last year. Also, it's very good that we have some verbs that are specific to birthday to use in our response so that our vocabulary can be deemed as wide and in depth. So some of the verbs that we can use are celebrar, which is to celebrate. We can have tener una fiesta, to have a party. We can include soplar las velas, to blow out the candles. This is a spelling error here. Soplar las velas, como así. Um, decorar con globos, decorate with balloons. También bailar, comer. Recibir regalos, just to name a few. All right, so in my response, we are going to use a number of those verbs. El año pasado. Para mi cumpleaños, or para celebrar mi cumpleaños. Yo tuve una fiesta. Yo invité. I invited. Ah, that's the personal ah that we mentioned before. Todas mis amigas mejores y mi familia. El año pasado, para celebrar mi cumpleaños, yo tuve una fiesta. Yo invité a todos mis amigos mejores y mi familia. Yo comí mucho pastel y helado. Y yo soplé las velas de mi pastel y lo corté, I cut it, con mi mejor amiga, Anabel. Luego, yo bailé mucho. Y recibí muchos regalos bonitos. Fue muy divertida. Me divertí mucho. All right, so... El año pasado, para celebrar mi cumpleaños, yo tuve una fiesta. Last year, to celebrate my birthday, I had a party. I invited all my friends, my best friends and family. Accent here. Yo comí mucho pastel. I ate a lot of cake and ice cream. Y yo soplé las velas de mi pastel. I blew out the candles of my cake and cut it. Y lo, y lo corté con mi mejor amiga Annabelle, with my best friend Annabelle. Luego yo bailé mucho y recibí muchos regalos bonitos. Then I danced a lot and received a lot of beautiful gifts. Fue muy divertida. It was very fun. Me divertí mucho. I enjoyed myself a lot. Bueno, vamos a continuar. So we have another set of questions here. Let's go. Number one, ¿Dónde vives? Where do you live? Bueno, yo vivo en una comunidad. Se llama Buena Vista. En la parroquia 
en la parroquia de Santa María. Or if we want to give a specific response, which can be similar to giving your address, it would go like this. Yo vivo en la calle bonita, número tres, en Kingston, Jamaica. Número dos, describe tu casa. Mi casa es muy moderna, acogedora y bonita. My house is very modern, welcoming, and pretty. Tiene nueve habitaciones. Tres baños. Una cocina, una cocina, un comedor y un garaje. So to respond to this question, it's very good to begin with giving some general adjectives, then going into how many rooms there are in the house. And then we can end it there. So it has nine bedrooms, three bathrooms, a kitchen, a dining room, and a garage. Numero tres. We just responded to this one, so we're just going to skip this one. Number four. ¿Quién en tu familia utiliza el internet? Who in your family uses the internet? Everyone uses the internet. So, so we would respond by saying, toda la familia utiliza el internet. ¿Para qué utiliza el internet? Um, utilizamos el internet, or we could say utilizamos la red, which is another way to say internet, para mandar mensajes, buscar información, hacer proyectos, y mantenerse o mantenernos informados. Stay informed. Número seis. Which is similar to a question that we did in the previous section. So we'll go on to number seven. Bueno, number seven. ¿Qué te gusta y qué no te gusta de tu familia? What do you like and what don't you like about your family? So, me gusta que mi familia sea. That is the construct that we're going to use because this is a subjunctive sentence to state that you like that another person is a certain way. That is one of the structures, the set of words, the set of expressions that means that we would need a subjunctive con conjugation. So we used sella. Me gusta que mi familia sea comprensiva, paciente y amable. No me gusta que mi familia sea ruidosa, antipático, antipática y perezosa. <laughs> all right, so two things. We have to ensure that all of our adjectives are feminine because we are describing familia, which is a feminine no. We could have also added por otro lado, if it is that we're going to respond to both counterparts at the same time. So we would transition from I like to, on the other hand, I don't like. Por otro lado, no me gusta que. Bueno. All right, number eight. Describe a typical Sunday in your family. Describe un domingo típico en tu familia. I'm going to begin with my favorite word, normalmente. Normalmente, cada domingo, 
nos levantamos, so we get up, a eso de las siete de la mañana. Luego, desayunamos y vamos a la iglesia por tres horas. Por la tarde, preparamos una gran cena de arroz con guisantes y pollo frito. Cenamos juntos, miramos. la televisión y a eso de las seis nos preparamos para la semana que viene. ¡Qué vida tan interesante! Bueno, so let's unpack this normally each sunday we get up at around or at about seven in the morning then we have breakfast we go to church for three hours in the afternoon we prepare a great dinner or a big dinner of rice and peas and fried chicken we have dinner together we watch television and about and at about six we prepare ourselves for the following week what an interesting life Bueno, all right, so we completed another section of questions. Let's do our final section of questions at this time. So upon completing two home and family past paper sections, we would have realized that we saw some questions that are popularly asked, such as where do you live? Who do you live with? How many persons are in your family? What activities does your family do together? Those are very popular questions, and I always implore my students to prepare for the popular questions in particular because they are so repetitive. So here's our final section, and we have some questions that are a little different from the ones that we did before, which is awesome for us, so we can tackle all of these. Number one, ¿Quiénes viven en tu casa? It's very important for us to understand the question words that are asked. We have quién, which is who, and then quiénes is basically also who, but it's referring to a plural um, noun. So who are the persons who live in your house? Another way of asking, who do you live with? You could have also been asked the question, con quién vives? Who, with whom do you live? Or cuántas personas hay en tu familia? So CXC also tends to ask the questions in another way. And we have to be prepared for all of them. So who lives in your house? We could say I live with. Yo vivo con. Yo vivo con mis padres, mis tres hermanos, y mi abuela. Or we could say las personas que viven En mi casa son mis padres, mi abuela, mis hermanos, y yo. So there are two ways that we could have responded to that question, and both of them are correct. Number two, en tu familia, ¿quién es tu persona favorita y por qué? We, uh, we answered a similar question before, so I will skip this one. Let's go to number three. ¿Qué haces para ayudar en casa? What do you do in order to help at home? Pues, well, normally, normalmente, yo lavo los platos, limpio mi dormitorio, lavo la ropa y hago mi cama para ayudar en casa. So this is a simple chore question. What chores do you do at home? What do you do to help at home? So you could have also been asked, 
using the word que haceres, which are chores. Or you might have seen or heard the term tareas domésticas. So they would either ask you using any of these structures, que haceres, tareas domésticas, or what do you do to help, which is another way to ask you, what chores do you do? Number four, ¿cuál es la profesión de tu mamá o de tu papá? To respond to this question, we don't need to say the profession of my mother is and the profession of my father is because we don't speak that way. We would just go ahead and say my mother is or my father is. A very important note is that we do not use the indefinite article. So we do not need to say my mother is a doctor with the un or the una. We have to eliminate that because it is not said in Spanish. Mi mamá es médica. Notice we do not say mi mamá es una médica. We do not need the indefinite article. Mi mamá es médica, or they would ask you about your father, in which case we would respond and say something like, mi papá es abogado. Feel free, of course, to put in whichever professions you would like. Also, it doesn't have to be true. Whichever profession comes to your mind, because we go with those. Also, we are ensuring that we prepare for such questions. So let's ensure that we revise all the professions beforehand, that we choose three that we're always going to mention if asked. Bueno, whether it's médica, abogado, enfermera, profesor, we choose from those and we practice those and we take those with us into the exam. Number five, ¿Cómo pasa tu familia las vacaciones de Navidad o de verano? As I said before, very popular question to be asked. How do you spend a certain holiday or, or um, a special event? Or how did you celebrate a certain event um, last year or a couple of years back? In this case, it is asking normally, how does your family spend, which is pasar, the Christmas vacations or the Christmas holidays or the summer holidays? So you can be asked either one. Once again, it's very good to include verbs that are particular to Christmas. So some verbs are, for example, to hang decorations, colgar, los adornos, to decorate the Christmas tree, decorar el árbol navideño, to go shopping, ir de compras, we could say um, receive and exchange gifts, or like buy and exchange gifts, etc. Comprar y, well, in this case, it would be a intercambiar to exchange regalos. So wake up early, you know, for example, on Christmas Day, the kids are very excited and you get up early to see what Santa Claus left for you. So that would be levantarse of course these would be conjugated temprano right now we are just pulling some vocab that we would need that are particular to christmas holidays um cenar or cocinar have dinner to cook big thing especially for caribbean families we take christmas very seriously with the cooking and the meeting together um to celebrate all right, so let's take these together and let's respond to the question. How does your family spend the Christmas holidays? So normalmente, um, mi familia y yo decoramos el árbol navideño y Colgamos los adornos en casa. Let me just move this to the side. So it doesn't intervene with what I'm writing here. Now, I don't know about you, but in Jamaica, we like to paint the house and ensure that it's clean and everything. So, también, pintamos la casa. Or well, let's say pintamos y limpiamos la casa. So we paint and we clean the house. Para preparar. Now we can say, oops, para preparar. Mm -hmm. 
vamos de compras para regalos. Y el día de la Navidad, on Christmas Day, nos levantamos temprano We'll put it up here so that we can see what we're writing a little better. Intercambiamos los regalos y preparamos, preparamos mucha comida. Finalmente, vamos a la iglesia. All right, so it's a little choppy, but you get the essence. Everything is conjugated in the nostalgia form, which is an easy way to recall an event. So let's unpack it. Normally, my family and I decorate the Christmas tree and we hang the decorations at home. Also, we paint and we clean the house to prepare. We go shopping for gifts. And on Christmas Day, we get up early exchange gifts or exchange the gifts and prepare a lot of food finally we go to church all right let's continue with number six ¿Qué trabajo no te gusta hacer en casa? what job or task don't you like to do at home okay so it's similar to number three where it was asking what do you do to help at home no it's not it's asking what don't you like to do so which of these tasks do you prefer not to do it could also have been, what task do you like to do? So in this case, we could say, pues, no me gusta. Limpiar la casa. Or we could say, no me gusta barrer el suelo. I don't like to sweep the floor. And it doesn't ask us why, but we always want to put a why. And of course, our reason is going to encompass three different reasons porque es muy agotador it's very exhausting sucio it's dirty y incómodo it's not comfortable nobody likes to clean right bueno number seven te entiendes bien con tu mamá o con tu papá this is asking, do you get along well with your mother or your father? Now, we know entender to mean to understand, but entenderse is to get along with. So the, in this case, it will be, do you get along well with your mother or with your father and why? It's similar to one of the questions we were asked before, where we can state, oh yeah, because they listen to me, they understand me, they give me love, they give me support. So we could repeat those responses here. Pues, well, me entiendo bien con, or we could use another phrase, me llevo bien con, which is another way to say I get along well with, mi mamá o mi madre, porque ella es comprensiva, paciente, y me da mucho apoyo, the amor. Or we could say, me llevo bien con mi padre porque él es cómico cariñoso y él me da mucho dinero y apoyo. So very similar response let's unpack them well i get along well with my mother because she let me make a change here ella she is calm, um understanding patient and she gives me a lot of support and love on the other hand i get along with my father because he is funny loving or caring and he gives me a lot of money and support so let's put in our accents on end, on cómico, and a little squiggly line right here. 
Which brings us to the final question. ¿Con quién prefieres pasar tu tiempo libre? ¿Y por qué? With whom do you prefer to spend your free time and why? Prefiero pasar mi tiempo libre, or we could say mis ratos libres, which is another way to say my free time. It's always good if we can find a synonym to showcase our expansive vocabulary. So, prefiero pasar mi tiempo libre o mis ratos libres con mis amigos. Porque ellos me entienden, they understand me. Son muy afectuosos, they're very affectionate. Y amables. Y somos muy similares. Similares. All right, let's unpack this final response. I prefer to spend my free time with my friends because they understand me. They are very affectionate and friendly or nice, and we are very similar. This ends this portion of this video on home and family. I hope you feel a little bit more prepared than you were before at the start of the video to respond to questions that have to do with home and family. Please come back to this video at a later date to continue practicing. You can check out my other videos. Please like, please subscribe, and please share. And all the best in your upcoming exams. Adios. Music